the world is full of big companies. Nós também somos grandes. 3,200 stores. 6.3 million representatives. E consultoras. Bringing our products to over 200 million customers. Em 100 países. Mas por que nosso tamanho importa? Aren't there bigger things to be worrying about? Le monde n'a pas besoin d'une autre grosse entreprise. Those words are as true today as they were then. The world deserves something more. Nós acreditamos que podemos promover impacto positivo. We believe that the merit of originality is not novelty, it is sincerity. We stand for her and promise to build a better world for women through women. And we believe business can be a force for good. Somos grandes y por eso tenemos una responsabilidad importante. Enough doing business. Not to be the best in the world, but to be the best for the world. We need to be so much more than just another big company. We are innovators. Change creators. A company of women for women. Nós compartilhamos riqueza. Planet carers. Rainforest protectors. And we'll never be animal testers. Natura. The Body Shop. ESO. Natura and Co. The best beauty group for the world. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Zeisler. I'm the Global Vice President of Field Services at Delphix. My guest today is Renzo Petri, Head of Cloud Platform Engineering and DevOps at Natura. Renzo has over 15 years of IT experience covering development, architecture, and infrastructure projects and solutions. He's been with Natura for nearly six years now. As the head of cloud, platform engineering, and DevOps, he has been responsible for transforming the infrastructure at Natura, leading the cloud journey and the construction of the DevOps and cloud area. Renzo is currently responsible for digital architecture, quality engineering, and platform engineering. Uh, and is very ent enthusiastic about disruptive technologies. Renzo, thanks so much for joining us today. To get started, could you tell us a bit about Natura? Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, todos. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be able to talk a little bit about our experience and especially to talk about Natura and Co. Well, Natura and Co. is a group that was made up of four major iconic beauty uh, sector companies: Avon, Natura, The Body Shop, and Aesop. We are a major global company with direct sales to consumers and we're present in over 100 countries. We are united by a belief that there's a better way to live and a better way to do business and to generate positive economic, social and especially environmental impacts. Our purpose, Jeff, as an organization is to cultivate beauty and relationships and to create a better way of life and a better way of doing business. We believe that we are agents of this change in the world. We build our relationships based on transparency, collaboration, diversity, and we are committed to integrity and accountability. We want to be the best beauty group for the world, not just in the world. That's wonderful. What a great introduction. It sounds like a, a really great company to work for. So to kick things off, I'd like to um, just start with an overview. We want to focus on three topics today. Uh, the first is Natura's purpose-driven mission and sustainability goals. The second is Natura's digital transformation and the business model shift that that's driving. And last is the role of DevOps in driving innovation and helping the company achieve uh, the two goals prior. So um, to start off with, tell me a little bit about Natura's mission. You mentioned a couple things there in the introduction, but the group describes itself as purpose-driven. What does that mean for a business? Excellent question, Jeff. Let's talk a little bit about everything we love, beauty and technology. It's a fact that nowadays people are paying more attention to those companies that are socially engaged 
and that maintain a coherent stance, including words and actions, to produce a more sustainable, equitable, and conscientious world. At Natura, which is one of the companies of the Natura & Co. group, we have a long-standing commitment to producing positive impacts in the world. Our initiatives are well known and include efforts to protect the Amazon, empower women, and promote social inclusion and diversity. We are currently aware of the need for constant evolution in our corporate practices, and this is part of our strategic agenda, and sustainability is included in our strategic planning. That's why we launched in June of last year the Commitment to Life by Natura and Co., which is the plan that brings together our goals and commitments through 2030. In this plan, we have very clearly and directly set out the actions we intend to take to address urgent global issues like climate change, the preservation of our beloved Amazon biome, the defense of human rights, guaranteeing equality and inclusion for everybody in our network, as well as our belief in the circular economy and regeneration. I was able to review the Sustainability Vision 2030 that's published on your website, and uh, it goes into great detail about um, what's important to the company and, uh, you know, what is driving your goals, not just financially, but also to make the world a better place, which is fantastic. Um, the company is also undergoing modernization of its business model. Uh, shifting from a mostly direct sales model through consultants to an entirely digital-enabled uh, sales model uh, through physical retail stores. Can you share a little bit about what's driving this shift and what your goals are? Perfect, Jeffrey. Yes, Jeffrey. Uh, I invite everybody to log on to Natura & Co.'s website to get to know a little bit more about our journey and to buy stuff as well. Why not? Specifically regarding our journey, the pandemic has greatly accelerated our strategy for digitalization, which we had been investing in for some years already in order to expand our sales model so that the consultants and sales reps are in contact with our clients. As soon as the crisis started, we directed our tech innovation staff to focus on those projects that would be most useful at that time betting more heavily on digital tools and fitting them to the digital demands of our consumers, uh, especially to keep this economy moving forward so that our consultants could continue to have their income, which is important for them. Digitalization has shown itself to be essential to our business model and very resilient during this time. Our combined sales with e-commerce and social selling in the group have grown 80% in the fourth quarter. And with all of the different businesses, we've reached the highest level of digital sales in history. Speaking for Latin America, which is the greatest focal point in this time for Natura, we've produced more than a million virtual sales spaces for our consultants. The orders received through these digital spaces have increased 60%. And in these digital spaces, the consultants have their own e-store where the client receives the virtual consultancy services, as well, of course, as being able to purchase products in our e-commerce spaces. We have seen this important movement in Avon as well, with increasing sales through digital magazines, new app features, and the launch of our e-commerce site in Argentina as well as many other features that were developed uh, over the course of the last year and during this year. I would dare say that we've achieved just a few months into the digitalization plan, something that would otherwise have taken some years to achieve. And to finalize, Jeff, the important thing to highlight is that beyond this concern for the digital aspects, we are also improving the technology in the supply chain. Currently, it is possible to guarantee the traceability of our ingredients as far back as their biodiversity through a blockchain tool, guaranteeing a long-lasting relationship with these communities throughout the Amazon region and strengthening our innovative business model with our partners. Well, that's incredible. Uh, first of all, the growth rate, right, uh, that you guys were able to show through a pandemic year, but also the the shift to these digital models. And I, I agree with you. We're hearing this from lots of customers that, you know, uh, the COVID pandemic has forced them to just speed up all these uh, efforts that they had to try and change the way that they do business. That's amazing to hear that what you guys have accomplished in such a short period of time. Um, 
Tell me a little bit more about the modernization itself and some of the technology choices. Um, how is Natura modernizing its technology to meet the changing market needs and emerging consumer trends? Technology is already part of our business model. First of all, the adoption of a digital strategy, which is 100% cloud-based, was very important and was focused on the restructuring of our assets. Natura is a company that's existed for over 50 years. There were many of our technologies that were approaching obsolescence. And this discipline and this decision to move to the cloud ensured our scalability with an emphasis on experience and performance, which are our trademarks. Another decisive factor was the creation of a strategy focused on data and data-based decisions and the structural changes of the organization from the point of view of technologies, allowing us to be more flexible and streamlined and to more easily test new hypotheses. Making it clear that a successful example of this investment in digitalization and technology was our social selling, which brings together our direct sales with our online sales, enabling the consultants and sales reps to receive payments via the internet and publicizing sales and offers and sharing our digital magazines and catalogs through different uh, digital communications media and maintaining all their consultancy activities. Only the delivery remains our responsibility. Social selling enabled us to expand our networking abilities, allowing direct contact with the customer anywhere in Brazil or in Latin America through our social media. Beyond that, recently we launched our payment platform, 100% uh, uh, directed and dedicated to our consultants and with customer service mechanisms using humanized chatbots, and personalized sales via machine learning, augmented reality for our apps, you name it. It's an infinity of possible changes in technology which allowed us to provide even better social inclusion. Wow, that's really neat. I think, um, you know, adoption of cloud and focus on data are things that are very near and dear to our hearts at Delphix. But it's amazing to hear about all the advanced technologies that you guys are employing um, to, to get your products in front of your customers and to make it easier for your consultants. It's, um, it's pretty incredible. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your brands and acquisitions. So uh, Natura has been on an acquisition spree over the last few years with The Body Shop and Avon being the most recent. How has integrating these companies impacted your digital transformation e efforts, particularly uh, from an IT perspective? It's been exponential. That's the right word, Jeffrey. Speaking of our companies, we generate income for millions of people. We are one of the companies that most promotes digital inclusion in our region. And our social network, since it is digital, has the power to transform the lives of four and a half million consultants and sales reps in Latin America alone. The speed required to meet the demands of the business demanded in turn great efforts on the part of the IT team, especially with regards to scalability and integration. Integration especially because we have totally different ecosystems in terms of IT architecture and they need to be strongly integrated. We need to reduce waste. So once again, the adoption of cloud-based platforms aligned with the strategy of architecture has helped us to make progress more quickly, as well as the data strategy and API first strategy. The challenge here in Latin America has been hiring specialized personnel. Recently, we've invested in the platforms that feed into our delivery process, especially those based on DevOps engineering which are being essential for this process of integration and rationalization of our legacy systems with a minimal impact and the possibility for exponential growth in our business models and the transformation of our businesses. That's wonderful. Thank you for that perspective. It sounds challenging to me, but also that you guys are doing an incredible job. So global expansion, we know is a strategic growth lever for Natura. You mentioned at the beginning just how many countries that you guys do business in. Um, and your global presence is uh, pervasive. How does going digital help with that? And how are your customers around the world impacted by Natura's digital transformation journey? 
Our principles, Jeffrey, are very much aligned with a digital platform that is robust, that allows rapid growth and an outstanding customer experience. A B2B and B2C platform that's multi-channel and that would guarantee the evolution to omni-channel and that has a business model through an ecosystem of integrations with partners and providing us this capacity for the group to provide sales to partners in different sectors. Our leadership is already thinking on a global scale. Recently, uh, I will mention one case where we did the unimaginable. We entered an Asian market with a product launch in record time through our platforms in the Malaysian market. We recently entered that market with our full stack of technologies for e-commerce and our stacks of consultant functionalities and our apps and our websites. This has allowed us to think bigger and better regarding our strategies for multi-branding and multi-region as well. That's a great uh, anecdote about, about Malaysia. People don't often, or at least I don't think of that as, as one of the um, major economic expansion areas, but for you guys to be able to enter that market so quickly says a lot about the flexibility that you've built uh, into your digital technologies. That's amazing. Um, just in general, Renzo, everything that you've talked about so far, far makes me think that it's a ton of change that you guys are managing. And what would you say have been the biggest challenges in your digital transformation and your business modernization journey? In our case, we had to remake our traditional business model to operate at a much higher rate of speed and be much more scalable. So the changes in mindset, hiring people, changing technologies, it was a great challenge, but we are overcoming it with excellence. So moving into a, in an increasingly digital business model without losing track of our essence and purpose, that's what we believe in. Our internal network also believes in our value proposition. And through this challenge of entering markets and making all these changes at the same time, it's been the strength of our network and the strength of our personnel that have enabled us to progress so rapidly in this transformation. What role does data management play in your digital transformation efforts? Can you share some examples of where it has made a big impact? Yes, Jeffrey. One of the cases I would like to mention, which was a great success uh, with our partner Delphix, we have one of the largest SAPs in Latin America with a huge volume of invoices needing to be processed. That data is at the core of the digital platform for orders, whether from our consultants or sales reps. We faced a gigantic challenge in orchestrating or integrating the environments for production, processing, and auditing to guarantee greater delivery speed. We had a need to deliver these environments to the engineering teams more quickly. As infrastructure designers, we take two to three months to set up one single environment. And with the adoption of the Delphix platform, we reduced this lag time to days. Currently, we can in one week create completely reproducible environments with production data. Beyond that, this data evolution has allowed us to monitor the journey of the client with a 360-degree perspective, mapping micro-events of their uh, interaction with our platforms to guarantee a better client experience and guaranteeing personalized insights. In addition to the technical aspects, more efficient and democratic management of this data is essential, especially in the digital initiatives. That's why we created a data-focused center of excellence during this last year, especially to ensure that we maintain the focus and energy necessary for this discipline that is so important. Well, that's great. Uh, it's neat to hear that you guys have actually created a center of excellence around this. And um, I'm sure that's uh, tied into your DevOps initiatives as well. As a DevOps evangelist within Natura, how has DevOps influenced this transformation? Tell us a little bit about that. This is one of our passions, Jeffrey, speaking for all of us. Ever since we created a center of excellence for cloud DevOps, from the moment that we started to use these technologies, and started to believe in this culture change, we've seen fantastic results. 
The creation of a space to be a center of excellence for DevOps was necessary to create workshops and to engage our teams in changing the culture. Our stack today is practically 100% open source. We have some tools that we are developing to implement uh, DevSecOps, but the creation of a platform engineering team for DevOps lifted us to a completely different level. In the same way that our partnership with Delphix has produced good results, the development of this team has given us autonomy for our squads, guaranteeing the dev experience and generating a greater autonomy for the product teams. Currently, the squads and our product teams can provide self-service infrastructure without having to depend on the infrastructure teams. This is go-to-market. This reduces lead time. Everything with guaranteed quality and security. In other words, autonomy with a standard of excellence. That's great. I love hearing about uh, enablement of self-service uh, for DevOps squads. But you're right, you know, putting some fences around those uh, that self-service access uh, to make sure that they are still sort of obeying the framework that you guys have in place is really important as you do that. So let's shift gears a little bit and um, talk about compliance. You know, anytime we're talking about important company data, uh, personal data, uh, we have to talk about compliance. Globally, we're seeing a lot more regulation regarding personal data. Brazil's LGPD law became effective last year. How is that impacting Natura? Is it driving the decision to mask data in your DevOps environments? Are there other environments where masking is also important for Natura? Exactly right. Recently, with the entry into force of the LGPD in Brazil, we created a broader program, a corporate privacy program. As I mentioned, we have legal and social responsibilities, and this responsibility for the safekeeping of data is not just a regulatory compliance issue. We had already been working toward that, but now with the advent of this law, we are adapting all our processes, including DevOps and data ops. They've helped us to create this culture that is consistently one of responsibility with regards to the use of data in all of the creation of non-production environments. We are working with Delphix in masking these data in order to enable their use. We've been working with other solutions on the market produced by specialists in data privacy, and we've been revising our entire portfolio of apps and data to guarantee that all our policies and practices are complying with our corporate privacy program. We evaluate this every day. It's a daily effort to ensure that this data is anonymized in these production environments to guarantee the safety of our customers. That's great. It sounds like you guys are making every effort to uh, protect the personal data of your customers. It's fantastic. Tell us a little bit, like, how does digital transformation tie into the sustainability and social inclusion efforts? Are the two related? Totalmente. Absolutely. Our journey of digital transformation, Jeffrey, which we started particularly in Natura many years ago, and that now extends to the other companies in our group, is a strategic enabler for all of our commitments with regards to the positive social impact we want to cause. Advances in digitalization in our business model allowed consultants and representatives to keep their businesses active, even during strict lockdowns because of this terrible pandemic. And this has become the only source of income for many of them because of economic downturns. Furthermore, we have cases of technology launches that take into account not only sustainability issues, but also social inclusion issues, as is the case with our voice commerce, which was launched in record time to guarantee that social inclusion. These advances have allowed our team members and our consumers around the world to enjoy a very, very successful first year of integration between the companies. When we deliver positive results to one company, we can produce synergies with other companies and have positive repercussions, especially in the reduction of our carbon footprint. Finally, the evolution of our direct sales model to a relationship sales model brings with it this development of the well-being ecosystem within our network. Technology is the lever to promote the development of both social inclusion with the financial benefits we mentioned, which help to increase people's income, 
but also improves the physical health, mental health, and emotional health for everyone. I don't know if everyone knows this, but recently Natura has launched an app that is available online called the Meditation app, which is an invitation to everyone to reconnect with themselves and improve their mental health and well-being so that everyone can, at this difficult time, connect to their inner selves as well. That's awesome. I'll definitely download the Meditation app when we're done here. I could certainly use a bit more of that in my own life. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's next for the IT team at Natura. What are some new technologies and approaches that you want to adopt going forward? Jeffrey, we are very dedicated to elevating our DevOps practice to DevSecOps levels. We are committed on a global scale. Now we need, from the point of view of engineering, to become increasingly fast and agile in delivering quality products and also especially looking to our infrastructure elements to become more predictive. So technologies like AI ops, blockchain, IoT, Industry 4.0, these are already a reality here within our group, but we are expanding them on a daily basis. So automation, automation, and more automation has been our mantra, especially to help us deliver more quality products in a timely manner and advancing our cloud-based integration strategies as well to guarantee the launch of more and more innovative solutions. And finally, making greater use of the power of this network. Our API first strategy is very well structured and we are expanding it to draw more partners into this ecosystem that can help us in our mission. That's wonderful. In a letter on shifting our understanding of development, Natura's CEO, Roberto Marquez, says the era of growth at any cost is gone, replaced by the opportunity to build sustainable growth and the notion of a thriving society in which the needs of people, planet, and profit are balanced for the benefit of all. We couldn't agree more at Delphix. Thank you so much for joining me today, Renzo. This has been a great conversation. Uh, and we really appreciate the relationship that we've developed with you. And it's been so exciting to hear about all the wonderful things going on at your company. Obrigado, Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Delphix team. It's been a great pleasure indeed to be able to talk a little bit about our history. And you are certainly part of this journey. You have helped us to guarantee greater flexibility and security in our deliveries and have a positive impact on our ecosystem and on our network. Thank you very much. Thank you, too.